This unit discusses the check valves, cylinders, and seals. The check valve is a directional control valve used in both hydraulic and pneumatic systems. Its primary application is to provide bypass flow for flow controls, pressure controls, filters, and coolers. Close cousins of the check valve, the shuttle valve, and the quick exhaust valve will also be discussed. We will also examine basic cylinder construction and terminology, and understanding of the purpose of seals is also critical to anyone working on fluid power systems. When you get done viewing this lesson, you will understand the purpose of the check valve, the different kinds of check valves, how check valves are used, the makeup of a cylinder, the purpose of seals, and the different types of seals. Check valves block fluid flow in one direction, much like a diode blocks electrical flow in one direction. Their primary function is to provide a path of free flow around a device when the function of that device is only needed in a single direction. The most common movable members used in check valves are steel balls and poppets. In free flow, the fluid pushes the movable member against a light spring and flows around it. In block flow, the fluid moves in the direction which forces the movable member against a seat, causing it to choke off fluid movement. Normally check valves have only two ports. Another type of check valve can allow flow from two sources and from either source to one point. Shuttle valves have three ports. A variation of the shuttle valve is a quick exhaust valve. These three ported shuttle valves are used to release fluid directly from an actuator to increase speed and reduce piping. They are used primarily in compressed air systems. There is an application requiring a momentary blockage of flow in order to hold an actuator that is under load or one that requires exact positioning. In this use, the check valve is capable of blocking and also capable of being held open. This kind of check valve is pilot operated. There are two types, pilot to open and pilot to close. In this schematic diagram, the cylinder has a very heavy load attached to its rod, aided by the force of gravity. To lower the load, the DCV envelope on the left is activated by energizing solenoid A1. Without the pilot operated check valve, the cylinder would descend out of control as there would be nothing to keep the load from outrunning the incoming flow. This is due to the weight on the cylinder rod. With the check valve, the load is held until the signal oil to the cap in is transmitted from the DCV. At the same time, oil is transmitted to the cap in of the cylinder. It is also transmitted to the pilot line of the check valve, and the check valve is forced to open, allowing the cylinder to descend. It should be noted that this illustration is to explain pilot operated check valve operation. Normally, this kind of circuit would use a pressure control valve called a counterbalance valve. We will discuss this type of valve in a later lesson. Fluid power cylinders are normally controlled by directional control valves. Most directional control valves used in industry are actuated by an electrical device called a solenoid. These devices will be discussed in a future lesson. Electrical energy is sent to the solenoid, which produces a linear mechanical force. This linear force causes the spool in the DCV to move. This picture represents a typical double acting or differential cylinder. A double acting cylinder extends and retracts with pressurized fluid. The term differential comes from the fact that there is a difference of area from one side of the piston to the next. On the piston cap side, you have a larger surface area than on the rod side. The rod takes up space, which in turn decreases usable area, reducing force and volume. 
This results in a difference of force and speed when extending as compared with retracting. Seals are used at critical points within the cylinder to restrict the escape of fluid from one side of the piston to the other and also from escaping from inside the cylinder to the outside. Seals are located at the cylinder rod end cover inside the rod gland to prevent fluid from escaping around the rod, piston to barrel to keep oil from escaping across the piston. We will speak more about seals in a minute. Cushions are devices that trap fluid between the piston and the body caps to decelerate the piston and prevent impact damage as well as inertia forces that may affect machine operation. In many cases the cushions can be adjusted to obtain the desired amount of cushion or they may be adjusted to eliminate cushion altogether. Cushions are found in both hydraulic and pneumatic cylinders. They are more necessary in compressed air systems because the actuators tend to move faster than they do in hydraulic systems. A stop collar, also known as a stop tube, is a cylindrical ring put around the rod on cylinders with long strokes to prevent the rod from bending at the end of its stroke. By stopping the rod short of its full stroke, the force, which can be enormous, is spread over a larger area. A rod whose diameter measures 5 eighths, for example, and whose length is 10 feet will sag up to almost an inch when supported at each end. Cylinder rods with long strokes and subjected to side loads may buckle without protection. Stroke adjusters are seldom used anymore, but when they are, they can adjust the effective stroke of the cylinder to allow for a wide range of reach specific to the job. Seals prevent the escape of fluids in systems and allow for full control of the fluid. They are made from a wide range of materials and are selected according to the environmental conditions. Seal technology has come a long way in the last 50 years and we now have a seal for almost every imaginable application. Seals may be divided into two main categories. Seals that must control fluids as they move or between moving parts are dynamic seals. They can include any of the names in this list. Seals that are trapped between parts that do not move are called static seals. The most common static seals are O-rings and gaskets. These are examples of seals used in hydraulic and pneumatic systems and their components. First are the rod seals. Rod seals which guard against external leakage are one of the most vital components of the sealing system. These seals use a flexible lip edge which faces the direction the fluid is being applied. Next are the symmetrical seals. With thousands of available sizes and material combinations, symmetrical profiles are designed to act as either rod or piston seals, allowing one part number to function in two applications. Next are piston seals. Piston seals protect against leakage between the piston and the inside of the cylinder barrel. These seals must be able to deflect and account for minor imperfections of the cylinder bore while at the same time resist extrusion. Next are wear rings and bearings. The two names imply a similar function. They reduce friction and separate key components from incidental contact. These profiles look like a seal but must meet the full spectrum of needs from heavy duty hydraulic cylinders operating under the highest temperatures and pressures to pneumatic applications requiring low friction, long life, and self lubrication. Next are the backup rings. Backup rings offer simple solutions to safely increase system pressure or solve an existing seal extrusion problem. Available in a variety of materials to complement virtually any rod or piston profile, this seal helps to provide the main seal while it is under pressure in order to prevent pinching. Next are the polyurethane O-rings, D-rings, and head seals. Static 
polyurethane head seals are ideal for replacing o-rings and backups in hydraulic cylinder heads foolproofing installation and eliminating failures due to backup pinching and blowout. Next are the metric seals. Preferred profile rod, wiper, and piston seal designs are offered in metric standard sizes from many manufacturers. The means by which a cylinder is mounted to the machinery determines its usable service life. When the cylinder is firmly bolted into place and its rod has mechanical guidance throughout its movement, the usable service life will be long. Often though, cylinders are subjected to side loading which places stressors on the rod gland and bushing. Other factors that decrease service life are exposure to the weather and dirty working environments. When oil is restricted toward a cylinder pushing a load, the metering is called meter in. This type of metering is only safe and effective in situations where the cylinder is under a positive load. A positive load is one in which gravity and the load are always pushing back on the actuator. A forklift is an example of a positive load as a floor jack or as an in-ground lift as used in gas stations many years ago. When there exists the possibility of a load pulling on a cylinder in such a way as to cause its piston to accelerate away from the incoming oil flow, restriction on the oil leaving the actuator is needed. This type of control, called meter out, is the most common flow control used in both hydraulic and pneumatic systems. This type of control is most effective because the fluid cannot exit the cylinder any faster than the restriction allows it, no matter what the load is. In bypass flow control, a portion of oil flow is always being bled back to the reservoir. This type of control is not used in pneumatic systems and is rarely used today in hydraulic systems. Its chief advantages are that less energy is used by the power unit and less heat is developed because the relief valve never sees maximum setting. These are examples showing how and why check valves are used to bypass flow. The check valve eliminates the function of the flow control in the direction it is not needed or wanted. Check valves are also used with pressure control valves. This illustration shows one of the uses for a check valve in combination with another valve. In a flow control, the effect of metering flow may only be needed in one direction. When this is the case, a check valve is used to bypass the fluid in the opposite direction. Check valves are also used in pressure control valves, as we will see in a later lesson. Flow controls do the same job in pneumatic systems as they do in hydraulic systems. However, a pressure regulator is a pneumatic pressure control usually found in branch circuits leading up to equipment and they also affect flow rate. The regulator is normally passing and as it closes causes a slowing of the airflow and a drop in pressure known as pressure droop. Therefore it is necessary to consider the adjustment of both the flow control and the regulator to achieve optimum speed control in compressed air systems.